Hello all, it's Ellie and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you are a returning viewer while I'm doing my countdown to Halloween, hello, hi, I hope you are staying spooky. And um, if you don't know what my countdown to Halloween is, it is my 31 days of Halloween videos where I am posting a new video every single day of October. So if you want to join me in the countdown to the best day of the year, which is obviously Halloween, then feel free to subscribe and check out my other videos I've already done so far this month. For today's video, I will be covering a crime case and just like many other children right now with Halloween right around the corner, Many of them are planning sleepovers to plan on what they're going to be wearing for Halloween. But um, when three young girls are having a load of fun at a harmless sleepover, nobody thought that it would end in a kidnapping, a countrywide hunt and murder. But sadly, this would actually be the case for 12-year-old Polly Class. Just a little disclaimer before we get into this video. In no way do I mean any offence to anyone involved in this case or affected by this case. I know that this video is a part of my fun little countdown to Halloween but I still want to give full respect to this crime case because this poor girl went through so much and no one should ever go through that. I will be probably talking about some triggering topics so if for some reason you are triggered by any of the subjects I talk about please feel free to look in the description box where there will be hotlines and resources. So let me start by giving a little background on this young girl. Polly Hannah Class was born on January the 3rd, 1981. She was the child of Mark and Eve Class. She had a younger sister named Annie. Polly was a very musical child. She loved to sing and act in the school productions. She dreamed of pursuing an acting career when she got older. Her parents were divorced, but she still saw her dad regularly. Polly lived in Petaluma, California. She lived in a small city with a low crime rate and it was one of those small towns where like everyone knew everyone's business, just everyone knows everyone, a very like tight-knit community. On October the 1st, 1993, Polly had invited her two closest friends around for a sleepover that night. All three girls were playing in Polly's room, at, it was at the back of the house, while um, Polly's mother was at the front of the house and around 10.30 at night, the girls would get the biggest shock of their life and their lives would never be the same from this moment on where a man broke in through the back door and made his way to polly's room it was at knife point where he tied up polly's best friends gagged them and put bags over the head and told them to count to 1000 he then kidnapped 12 year old polly her two best friends were back to back and they were really trying to untie themselves but this wasn't working until one of the girls were able to bring their hands under their feet and this managed to free herself. The girls then woke up Polly's mum who immediately called the police. Over the weeks that followed, the search for Polly became the largest search ever carried out for a missing child. It involved 4,000 volunteers that all worked together in any way that they could to try and find Polly. The search was assisted by bloodhound dogs and took place over 1,000 square miles. TV shows such as 2020 and America's Most Wanted covered this kidnapping. An APB with the suspect's information was broadcasted within 30 minutes of the kidnapping. Polly's abduction was actually the first case that was posted all over the internet and uh, this media coverage really spread the word so, so quick. Normally it would just be a case of handing out missing posters but everyone started to wear a purple ribbon to show their support as it was Polly's favourite colour. In a rural area of Santa Rosa around 20 miles from Polly's hometown, a babysitter who was on her way home noticed a suspicious vehicle that was stuck in a ditch on her employee's private driveway. She then rang the property owner to see if it was anyone in the household's car. The owner didn't know whose car this was, so she quickly left the property with her daughter and then drove down the long driveway. She actually drove past the man that was in the car on her driveway. We would later find out was called Richard Allen Davis. When she got to a service station, she then decided to call 911 and two deputies were then dispatched on this call. They then found Richard drinking in his parked van. The only incriminating thing that he was doing at this point was trespassing. The police asked if she wanted to press for a citizen's arrest, but she didn't. Although this Richard guy gave the officers a really bad vibe, and they were really quite suspicious of him, 
they legally had to let him go because he wasn't breaking any other laws there was no charge pressed against him but they did luckily document this encounter now on the 28th of november this same woman who owned the house where richard had parked his car was walking in the area surrounding her house. There were a number of trees that looked like they had been cleared. It was on the ground where she found a pair of torn girls' leggings. She reported this to the police and they searched her property straight away. Police then made reviews to the calls that had been made the night of the kidnapping and it turns out that Richard actually had a recent report on him. They managed to match the prints that were found in Polly's bedroom to Richard's palm print. Officials decided to make an arrest of Richard for kidnapping Polly. While Richard was being interrogated by the Petaluma PD. The FBI launched a massive search that took place on December the 1st. The County Sheriff's Department were assisted with over 500 search team members from 24 different agencies for an even intense search on trying to find Polly. The search did produce other items of evidence but no human remains. The search was planned to end on Sunday the 5th of December but on the evening of December the 4th Rich confessed to kidnapping and murdering Polly Class. He had buried her in a shallow grave just off Highway 101. Although Richard did actually confess to strangling Polly to death, he refused to give a timeline from the events of October 1st, but it is believed that he was scared of being seen by people walk past him, so he decided to kill Polly before the arrival of the deputies and hid her body in the thick bushes on the hillside above where his car was stuck. He then went back to retrieve her body. He was reportedly out of breath, sweating profusely despite it being a cool night. He also had a load of twigs and leaves on him when he was contacted by the deputies. Richard Allen Davis wasn't sentenced till June the 18th, 1966. His charges were first degree murder as well as robbery, burglary, kidnapping and a lewd act on a child. While it was in the courtroom, Richard was nothing but angry and was sticking his middle finger up at the jury as he entered the room and made disgusting comments about Polly's father raping Polly. Then he got in a last word, adding insult to an already unspeakable injury. I would also like to state for the record that the main reason I know that I did not attempt any lewd act and that was because of a statement the young girl made to me when walking her up the embankment. Just don't do me like my dad. I have to pay my dues, so should Burn you. Burn in hell, Davis. Fuck. Damn, boy. Burn in hell. Moments later, Richard Allen Davis was sentenced to death. This is always a traumatic and emotional decision for a judge. You've made it very easy today by your conduct. He was on death row and in solitary confinement after almost fatally beating another inmate. As of 2019, a governor passed a rule of how death penalty is ineffective, irreversible and immoral and uh, executions won't be passed anytime soon. But I don't know, I obviously don't know everyone's opinion on the death penalty. I personally am against it just because there are some cases of people wrongly accused, although in this instance I wouldn't say that is a wrong accusation because it allows these cowards that committed these horrendous crimes to just get out of it. They can cause their trauma on the world and then they can be taken out. They don't really care. So I think they should be lived to be made to suffer in an environment they don't want to be in but deserve to be there. But that pretty much wraps up this case. Um, if you enjoyed it, please be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe. Reminder that I am posting a video every single day of October. So be sure to subscribe and join me on my countdown. I will see you in tomorrow's video. Remember to stay safe, stay spooky and until tomorrow. Okay, peace.